right. All right. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Dorothy. Hi, Susan. We are here with Sue Coffin. I called you Susan. Sue That's Coffin. Right. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> you all know me on my channel, Dorothy Morgan. You don't know me on Sue's channel. Maybe you do. We're going to talk yeah. about Mercury I'm retrograde today. That is coming up in April. And we're going to talk about how to use it, what to, what it, what it shows, what it represents for us. And Sue, what are you going to interject? Is you're a numerologist. I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk about the universal year in the month of April. Um, yeah, the universal year is that eight. Nice right? power, money, material success. Go get it. Very strong energy. Yeah. Um, the eight. The eight is about going into the dark, coming into the light. So oh, I love that reevaluation going on. People looking at things deeper. And in yeah. April, it's about communication. Oh, perfect for Mercury. That's yeah. perfect for Mercury. Yeah, because, you know, when we have Mercury retrograde, let me share my screen with you. First off, I want to make sure I have the right thing up. <laughs> Whenever I share my screen, just, just for a moment. Yeah. Momentarily. This is on AstroSeek. AstroSeek is, is for those who don't have um, software or just want to explore and play this is fantastic. Sue, can you see the whole thing? I can't see the whole thing I on can. my screen. Yes, you can? I okay, can terrific. Um, Astroseek.com is, is wonderful. and um, But come to me for your full-time astrology needs, okay? Most definitely. <laughs> They're fun for exploring, but uh, here I am. But what you can see is, is just, this is for this year, uh, 2024 into 2025. But you can see how long Mercury is in a zodiac sign and why why these red line these it the red areas those are the fire signs we're starting right now mercury retrograde on april 1st will start in the sign of aries that's a fire sign all right um later in the year in um when is the next one the next one will be um july it says july there but it's august oh i know what i'm doing here uh, the next one after the one we're going to talk about today, though, is in August. It's August 4th or 5th. It depends on where you live. That's what was confusing me. So that one will be all in August. And it starts in Virgo, but it's mainly, that's why Virgo has a little extra space here because the retrograde starts in Virgo in July. and um, But it's mostly retrograde in Leo. And then the one in November, December will be up in the fire sign of Sagittarius, so mm -hmm. for the most part, 2024 Mercury retrograde are in the fire signs. So Aries, the Leo Virgo in the summer, and then the Sag in the winter. And Sue and I will cover all three of these throughout the year, yes, just so definitely. you can um, have that. And then Mercury moves really quickly through the other earth and air signs and water signs, like it always does. But this is typical because every year Mercury is retrograde three times. And it spends a significant amount of time in one area of the Zodiac last year, 2022. It was back and forth between earth and earth and fire. So it wasn't um, a real honed in focused elemental Mercury retrograde. But this year it, it pretty much is for 2024. So I just yeah, a lot of people have told, asked me, they think that the Mercury retrograde is longer Um this because of my calendars, I have it on my calendars, my numerology calendars. Uh -huh. um, but you explained to me that it because it's in one month, it has it's not in taking two two weeks at the end of one month going two weeks into the next month, right. which is what it happens happens a lot. But uh, yeah, so because it's no it, longer than normal. No, it's not. No, 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 it's not any longer than usual. They're usually right around three weeks when it's longer, because it does sometimes the Mercury retrograde, depending on where it is out in how we get to visual view it. There are times when it takes an extra day or it's moving slower. So sometimes it will last. That's what happens. Sometimes it moves slower. I don't want to get into the science of it, but depending on where it is out in the solar system, it does, oh, you know, from our view. It's all of those different things. It will move slower and it will last one extra day mm -hmm. because the retrograde is moving slower. And those are the retrogrades that we feel a lot deeper. 
Uh, these ones are moving at a normal speed. Um, I think one of these, and I didn't do the math for today's video, so I won't bother speaking to it much, but one of these is a little bit longer than the others, but um, it's it's not enough for you to even be, you're not splitting hairs when it comes to Mercury retrograde. You're not, especially those of us who are listening, we're not experts on this. We right. are just saying what we're, why we want to know about Mercury retrograde is like, how is it going to impact? Everybody says, oh, right. Mercury's retrograde whenever anything goes wrong and things go wrong all the time. So it's not just that, but that's, we want to just look at it in everyday cycle. Right. So if it does Because last, it does have an impact. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. And of course it does. Yeah. The, and, and the retrogrades, if you could look at the ephemeris, I mean, the retrogrades last approximately three weeks. You know, so 21 day, 24 days, you know, 22, mm -hmm. 23, 24 days. So approximately three weeks is what they last, a little over three weeks. And then it's three weeks before, three weeks after that it takes approximately for it to move through the area, which people call the shadow, for it to move through the area that it's going to be retrograde in. And so right. it takes about nine weeks to move through an area that usually takes two and a half to three weeks, depending on how fast it's moving. You can see it's really moving fast through Gemini and it's really yeah. moving fast through cancer because it's 0 0.04 this year. So that means it's just moving really quick through those, through those Zodiac mm -hmm. signs, Pisces mm -hmm. too. So the other anyways. thing that you've, t you've taught me is um, it's the middle, it's in the middle of the Mercury retrograde that's the intensity is nope, right? it's the exact opposite of that. It's the beginning and the end, Sue, because oh, okay. it's, and this is part of it, the stationary positions where oh, Mercury right. stops to change direction. It will spend two, three, four days. Again, it varies, but three to four, I would rather say three to four days at the degree it's going to, um, the, 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 the degree that it stops at, mm -hmm. whether it's going retrograde or direct, and this year, Mercury goes is stationary on April 1st at 27 degrees of Aries. Now it's going to be at 27 degrees of Aries um, for one, two, three, four days, four days. April 1st is the middle. So April 1st is the oh, day it's officially okay. retrograde. It's just like, you know, I mean, in our automobiles, you know, we can stop pretty quick to a full mm -hmm. stop and put our car into reverse. But just think of a tractor trailer having to do that, something just a little bit bigger on how it has to slow down to make a complete stop and all the gears it takes to reverse. Just think of it like that. That's why it takes a few days. To me, those are the days of stress. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have to necessarily be stress. It can be if you're in a stressful situation. Mm-hmm. And the same thing happens when it's stationary at the other end of the retrograde period to move direct. And this year that's at 15 degrees of Aries, and that will be on April 25th. So the retrograde in this cycle that we're looking at, Mercury retrograde in the sign of Aries is April 1st to April 25th. April 1st, we're in between eclipses here too. So don't forget to go watch right. my eclipse videos. Yes. When yes. this comes up, the, um, I already have the full moon lunar eclipse out. So you'll be able to see that. I'll link it to this video when you're watching yes. this on YouTube yes. for you guys. Nice. And so, yeah. And so to have, um, a few things here, let's, let's cover a couple of things, mercury retrograde in, um, so we're going to slow down the emphasis on those, especially on those days, it's communication and self-expression and taking action, mercury retrograde in Aries and this stationary energy is just so intense. We can, it feels really concentrated. So if you are working on, you know, if, if you're managing some Aries energy and the Aries energy is action and movement and even anger and mm -hmm. really, def or, or speaking up and defending yourself, Mercury is our communication. Aries is all of those fiery things in a positive way, brainstorming and coming up with great new ideas. However, the beginning of this retrograde is in a waning lunar phase as well. We have to pay attention to that. That means 
I want, when you have conversations with people, if you're feeling, you know, like I really need to say something to somebody, mm-hmm. it's not about picking a new bone about a new subject. It's about working on something from right. before waning lunar phase, Mercury retrograde. It's like, I really, you know, it's just like somebody rehashing an old situation, but you have an opportunity now with this retrograde in the lunar phase in between two eclipses to really get to the root of a problem and take some action on that, because that is really what we want to do here. You know, know, it's almost like don't react. Don't Don't react. react. That's a really great way to say pull yourself (laughs) back and, and, and just breathe and then let it process it. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Because we're going to, in a retrograde like this, Mercury retrograde in Aries, we are going to revisit past conversations, reevaluate decisions we've made. Perfect time for this. This mm-hmm. isn't a negative. You know, this is a oh, no. wonderful way to use Mercury mm-hmm. retrograde. So we right. can understand things on a deeper level. So we right. can you know, work with others because the eclipses we're having are Aries and Libra and the Mercury is retrograde in Aries. <laughs> it's going to connect with, um, it's going to connect with the eclipse point that we have on April 8th. And um, the the whole point is, it's like we have this big opportunity to reconsider what we're saying, to look at old ways of doing things, to look at our old conflicts and misunderstandings and really get to the bottom of it so we can let it go. I mean, seriously, let it go. Do this work between the 1st and the 8th of April. I think you will be- And in April, numerology being the third month, uh, the three personal month um, universally, I would tell people, speak your truths from your heart. Perfect. Pull Pull those words out that you really need to say. Yeah. Not in an angry way. That's why you got to step back and make sure you, you've you um, composed yourself and you're ready to say it um, in a kind True enough. Way. But in an angry way yeah. is, uh, is also perfectly fine for Mercury, Mercury and Aries, because sometimes, you know this, sometimes people just have to get pissed off to say something. Because yeah. some people are so, they just would they rather it, not tip the boat, rock the so boat. close to their house, right? And they feel very vulnerable. And mm-hmm. sometimes a transit like this during during eclipse period, in this, all of the things, um, it just, it can come to a head being angry and upset. And we do say things we need to say, of course, sometimes mm-hmm. we're, you know, we all put our foot in our mouth here and there in life. But the point mm-hmm. is, it's like a, a, a way that other, I just don't want to dismiss the fact that Aries is about getting angry and about getting mad and allowing that to come out just like a really ugly zit that just needs to like, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, you don't want it to stay in. You got to let the pressure out, man. <laughs> so gross, um, but I know. No. Uh, Aries is, uh, it's get it done. Yes. Right. Move it. Yeah. Move, move things along. It's, it reminds me of the number one energy, okay. very strong energy, pioneer, yeah. go get her. Yeah. And it, but it's in the, is it in the first house? Is that right? Um, Aries is the natural ruler of the first house. Yes. Oh, right. So okay. looking at the natural chart, it might not be the case for you. It depends on, you know, that roulette wheel of, of life where, where you hold your Aries, my Aries, I, all my Aries is in my 12th house. So it's, but we're still going to feel that. So you are absolutely correct. It is naturally the first house. No, I think my Aries is in the ninth house. I didn't look at your chart before we so, started. So when we we talk about this stuff, we're looking at the natal chart. When you say where your Aries is, it's about okay. what where it is when you were born. Correct. Okay. Yeah, because that's a different that's a different uh, placement. We have the natural chart where when we learn astrology, we learn Aries rules the first house, Mars rules Aries, 
Taurus rules the second house, right. Venus, and on and on we go. Those That's the foundation. That's what's underneath our chart. And then we're born with our planets in all the different places at a different time of day, you know, all different times of day. We have different things that are at the first house, but the, the efficiency, the natural balance, the natural chart is still underneath what our superimposed personality is yeah mm -hmm. so everybody has aries somewhere you're not in aries you don't have to be in aries for this to impact you mm -hmm. <clears throat> so yeah. tell me about april and all of those things i want to i want to hear that yeah. part well okay so if again if we look at the universal year 2024 you add that up you get the number eight mm -hmm. and eight is all about power money material success climbing the ladder um it is about reevaluating things, looking at things on a deeper level to make it. Um, it's a constant motion, right? Your pencil never leaves the paper when you're writing the number eight. It's, right. all, it's always around. It's the infinity when you turn turn it over. Mm -hmm. um, and, but it can cause a little bit of chaos because it does want us to look at things and reevaluate things. Now, when we get into April, it's going to be the number three month. Okay. And three is by rights, it's very social, fun. It likes like to um, likes to be out and about. It likes to, um, it's very creative. Mm -hmm. It can be very impulsive, uh, restless. So, but it is about using its words. It's a communicator. So oh, yeah. it's supposed to, it's supposed to use its words, speak its truths from its heart. Yeah. Um settle things. Now, a lot of times when three is around, friends become issues because friends are the ones that poke us to make us look at things deeper. So yep. um, I wouldn't be surprised but some friends come in and they just kind of sneak some things in to make us just have to have to speak our truth. And address something. Because yeah. if I've always discovered, I mean, and this is just the psychology of, of human humanity, you know, if something is upsetting you, that somebody else is saying or doing, you know, it's okay for, I mean, it's not about blame, but it's okay for you to look at, well, why is that bothering me? Right. Why is that upsetting me? That's yes. what we need to do. You know, I mean, to me, right. that's important. Yeah. And everything is a teacher, right, Dorothy? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's all it teaching. We shouldn't take it personally. We should look at that person and say, well, what are they teaching me? What do I have to look at? Like yeah. you said. Yeah. The other thing about this is great networking, great time oh, yeah. to be out. There's a great time <laughs> where somebody might introduce you to somebody influential, somebody who could yeah. help propel you down the down the line. Yeah, it doesn't exactly. need to be big. It could be um, just just that minor little detail that helps you to move forward I, a little it, bit. Yes, that's and that's you saying this is a number three in April. Is that what you were saying? Correct. If Correct. I was to look at the natural rulers, the natural rulership of the third house, the third house is cousins, siblings, neighbors. Yeah, Mercury rules right. the third house. You know, it's 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 a Gemini energy. We are as so it's all of that social. So yeah, the three, the number three for the month of April is um. And in, in this year right. and that month, right? Is that how that it, works? You're right. But when you put Mercury retrograde in the middle of that, I believe things swing back around. There's yes. there's some things, there will be some issues that you're going to have to reevaluate and look at. Yeah. Make a difference. And decision. you got to slow down a little bit. It can't be so reactive. Mercury, red, Mercury in Aries is like so fast, quick witted, quick mm -hmm. thinking. But you're right when it's in when it's retrograde and it has nine weeks approximately to spend in an area that only took three weeks. Let me tell you, the healthy human being, the healthy psychology, you know, we are going to be able to explore our own stuff and our own yes. communication style, our own self um, worth, self discovery, all of those things. But what we'll see in the world. And here's some of the, it's not all sugar coating. You know, what we'll see yeah. in the world is people being angry at each other, mm -hmm. very right. mad at each other because it's, because they're just not interested in going deeper. Aries has never been about going deep anyways, because that's not what its intention is. Mm -hmm. It's not what it's meant for. It's meant for action. However, we will see this in the world in a lot of ways where there's a lot of anger and a lot of fighting. We already have mm -hmm. plenty of wars. Uh, 
but we'll see this, this can be amplified, but during the retrograde period, it could be a time where there is people like ceasefire. We need to make negotiations, mm -hmm. whether they yeah. fall apart or not. You know, like I'm not predicting any of those things, but these right. are all potentials that we can already right. see in the world, but Continued. They slow down. Yeah. How does that how does that coincide with the numerology? Or does it? Uh, oh, most definitely. Most definitely. Uh it there's going to be a lot of you know what slung at the wall this in April. Spaghetti? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Because of the um, S. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <It's> spaghetti. <laughs> Yeah, it's spaghetti. Yeah, a lot of it. And it's not going to all stick. That's for sure. It's, no. It it could be quite, um, it could be quite volatile with all the, yeah. the, the um, words that are going to come about. Yeah, and I think the second week in April could be significant. Something unexpected could come forward. Yeah, second week I also April. think that the eclipse, um, ma'am. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. it's going to change uh, the third week there will be some type of change that comes in and the yeah. fourth week will be a little bit about reevaluating and thinking about it and pulling back there's could even be something that comes um, a secret comes out and, you know, imagine that some things... <laughs> That's what's that imagine that yeah Depending really I know. Pay attention to, yeah, know I know yeah I know I um, know <laughs> But I, I do think the week two, and, and people will say to me, well, what does week two mean? You know, what energy comes and it goes, it flows constantly. So I can't say directly it's going to stop. It's going to start on the eighth. Yeah, I get it's it. Gonna, yeah. So in that area, something surprising can come forward. It doesn't mean it's bad, right? We've had Correct. great surprising things come to us. So exactly. Um, so yeah. And even in this time frame on April 19th, um, and yes, since we had a leap year, we had a leap day, we had an extra day in February. Right. Um, the change of the signs may be a day early because we've pushed one in, we've added one. So right. um, Taurus shows up on April 19th. So the sun in the sign of Taurus. So that means one more planet, the sun is out of Aries. So that oh. is starting the third week um, where the mm -hmm. sun is in Taurus. And it will slow down the fire energy of Mercury oh. retrograde. And again, on April 8th, that big eclipse, will you be able yeah. to see it? I'll be able to see it. I have to yes. drive just a couple hours north to get the totality of it, but I sh I'll be yeah. able to see it. Yeah, we but, can, um, we'll be able to see it. It's yeah, it's going to be weather. quite a day. <laughs> yeah, that I know. What's the chances, right? Only what? We have 127 days of sunshine in the, where I live. In, in, oh my uh, god i've never yeah, looked so, that up i'm in new hampshire i'm in the middle part of new hampshire so, yeah, so i, don't I know. hope i hope it's out for everybody to witness i can mm -hmm. remember as a child we lived right next to a, a big field mm -hmm. and the university came down and built a big platform for one of the solar oh. eclipses yeah it's really cool yeah yeah so what do you think april 8th um that would be a 20 day for me, a two. I'm zero. still working on that forecast. I haven't got that forecast out yet. Um, I am doing a big lecture on that over on Patreon too. So you anybody can check that out. Um, it, you know, the new moon tends to, it is mainly about, we have a new moon every month, but it's not that the sun and the moon and the earth are perfectly by declination aligned. That's what the total solar eclipses represent. Um, it's in Aries. It's in 19 degrees of Aries and Mercury is going to connect with that. I wrote the dates down, but I forgot. I don't know where I put them, yeah. but um, it's, uh, it is, it's, it's about focusing on the self. So this is why I feel while Mercury is retrograde before we get to the uh, solar eclipse, the new moon solar eclipse on April 8th, it's at 228 P um, nope. It's at 221 PM Eastern time. So go ahead and adjust to whatever your time zone is. But the point is, is like, if we are, it's recommended. This is how we use astrology, Mercury and Aries, all the things we've just said, the numerology as well. It's about inner reflection. So when we get to the new moon that is requesting that we, or 
it, we recommend, I recommend you journal around that day. I would do it the day of, the day after. You got a couple of days when there's a lot going on with that eclipse. Mm -hmm. It's not just that moment in time. Sit down and 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 look at what you think you want to um, bring into your life. What steps do you want to take for more healing? So that shows me from April 1st to the 8th, while Mercury is retrograde and moving yeah. super slow, till we get to that eclipse, the waning lunar phase, we have a whole week to work on what is inside and what needs to come out but what needs to come out in a healthy way. So hopefully you're able right. to approach that. And that new right. moon eclipse in Aries, um, just in a nutshell, is is about our own um, approach and our own drive. This is a really wonderful opportunity to just start to put onto paper what you want out of life now, you know, what you want now, what is important for you now, what do yeah. you value and what do you want? And that is yeah. a, an approach and then when Mercury finally does um, turn around on the 25th of April um, at 15 Aries, you know, you'll just have that opportunity to um, just to reevaluate and slowly work towards some of those goals. Because it's eclipses, solar eclipses, of course, indigenous peoples are like, don't, don't look, don't watch them. They, mm -hmm. their, their story is, is that it's not a good thing to see in person, stay inside. Oh, really? I didn't know yeah. that. I know. I know it is. It's part of an indigenous, a few indigenous stories, but, um, that's okay. Hmm. Millions of people. I think it was it. because it was so scary back then. It, they didn't know what was going on. It must've yeah. been really frightening if you think it must've been because it didn't happen in the same place. And there's so few people anyways, but, um, now we can just see it wherever we go or just watch it. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I know. anyways, I um, so it. yeah, that's, um, so to me, that's in a nutshell, that eclipse, but I'll dig deep into that, into um, my regular forecasts. Nice. Yeah. I would highly recommend anybody to sign up for Dorothy Morgan's Patreon. Um, she has wonderful videos. I'm on it. She teaches me all the time. It's very, it's very, it's fun. Dorothy's yeah. a wonderful teacher. So oh, uh, I'll make sure I have all that information on in the description below so that everybody can check it out yeah. because you have, you have a free, but then once you do the free, it's like, Ooh, I want to do more. Deeper. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I go, I, I go to the next level and the next right. level. Yeah. There's four levels yeah. and they're, they're not expensive, but the point is, is like, you know, wherever you're at on, you know, you just get more content and more content and more content. And right. it's just, yeah, that's where I do most of my teaching. I have taught a couple classes. Um, I just finished teaching a very a, a foundational astrology class, but um, that's going to be available for sale soon. I'm just finishing today. I'm going to finish the recordings for it. I'm just going to sell it as a product oh, as nice. opposed to might as well. well that's a good and idea. Um, But yeah, you could just get to do more. And Sue is doing live numerology on her YouTube channel. That'll be linked in here too. I'll tag her. It's you know, like you do at and yeah. what is the name of your your YouTube channel? What the heck is numerology? Is the name of the show? It's healing numbers twenty two. If you search healing numbers that, you're going to you're, you're going to. I'll link it below yes. for everybody as well. And Sue's wonderful in her numerology sessions, and she's just really yeah. We have so much fun, help. don't we, Dorothy? Yeah, we do. Yeah, it's really wonderful the way um, you've done this for over a year now, where we work together in all kinds of different modalities, yeah. astrology, numerology, psychic medium, yes. tarot. And it just, you know, it all works really beautifully um, together. Energy so, is energy. It is. We can't deny that. No. So if we, if we can just get people to acknowledge that and learn what the energy wants from them. Yeah. Then, the, then it's easier to maneuver through the, the it, it, yeah, it sure what's is. called life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we got, we got a great month with numerology with the uh, yes. astrology for April number three and an eight. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's and in, Mercury that means that we have in a nutshell, that means what Sue? Um, it, it, it would be communication. Most definitely. Yeah. It would mean socializing people coming into your life. Some may be triggering things. Some may be bringing up different yeah. emotions because of Mercury. We're swinging the yeah. past around. That's going to. Yeah. So uh, my advice is to just like Dorothy uh, said, journal. 
channel mm. allow yourself to express yourself on the paper yeah. you you don't have to tell people what you're thinking or saying and then reevaluate that at the end of the month yeah, yeah. perfect perfect all right awesome this has been wonderful nice, Sue. always nice seeing you dorothy always nice and everybody else everybody all our info will be below so i'll have that Most attached definitely. take Most good definitely. care blessings namaste Bye. and have, have a great mercury retrograde <laughs>